Hi people, today we are going to be talking about Defy the Night by Brigitte Kermerer. And I have to say that I absolutely love the two covers that this book has. Uh, this one, because the flower, it's very important and I love that it's kind of shimmery, and the same it's in here. And uh, there is another edition, the hardcover one, that has the palace. And yeah, I think that the covers are very related to the book and it's amazing. And I have to say that I love all of Brigitte's books. I have, uh, like, I love how well she creates the characters. Because it's very easy when you are reading the book to feel like they are real people that you could meet on the street. And for me that's very important because I am a character-driven reader. So for me the most important part of the story is that the characters come as real people and yeah she succeeds and she creates amazing characters that stay with you way longer after you have finished the book so yeah i mean uh this book is amazing at the beginning it made me think about a curse so dark and lonely and the way that we have this uh somehow this darker side to prince charming so we have this character who, you know, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Here we are going to find this society where there is people who are falling ill. Uh, there is something called the fevers and it seems like uh, the people who have more power, more entitlement, more, more money are obviously, as always, as in real life, have uh, better means to get the medicine that they need. And the rest of the population are dying because of those fevers. So we have these figures of uh, these old loves. Uh, we have a girl called Tessa and we have a girl, uh, a guy called Wes. And they are like very Robin Hood in the way that they are stealing medicine from the rich people. And they are distributing it uh, among the more poor part of the society, the more poor part of the society. And, uh, yeah, you have this idea, you're, you're reading the story from their point of view, and you get this idea on your head that the king and the prince are very bad people because they are kind of harvesting all the medicine and they are not sharing with the population, all of this. And it really hit you, like, very hard when uh, Tessa, who felt something for worse, and they kiss and it's amazing, and then suddenly he dies. And... Um, really hit me how powerfully written it was by Brigitte. And one thing that this book has, this book has it's, um, it doesn't pull, pull its punches. Uh, I mean, it's not violent because it wants to be violent or it's not dark because, you know, let's make it dark. But it's very real in the way that if you are doing something that's outside the law, uh, you're doing something that is dangerous, you can die, you can get caught, you can get tortured, you can suffer the consequences. And what I love about this book is that it depicts everything as it really should be if, it, uh, if what's happening in the book was real. And uh, the feelings that Tessa has when she sees Wes body hanging, it's amazing how Brigitte's way of writing, you know, makes you feel. Because... You feel all the desperation, all of the pain, all of the rage, and you want to make everything burn as much as the character wants to. For me, that that's amazing. And this is a level of consistency that Brigitte Kemmerer is going to put through the whole book. We are going to be second-guessing everything that we thought we knew about the world, the characters, the situation. And we are going to be following characters who are not like, okay, now everything is good, now everything is perfect. No, we're going to be following characters who are going to find themselves maybe in better situations, but that doesn't mean that they forget everything that they have gone through and the luggage that they carry, you know, and the past and the people that they have lost and everything is still with them and influence the actions and the decisions and the way they have of acting. And what I love is that Tessa is going to find herself in the palace and... You might think, okay, now she's going to be the hero that we all need. She's going to be this very powerful mind character. He does everything and, you know, no. She finds herself in the palace and she pees herself because she's scared she's going to be killed. And she cries and she stammers and she's afraid for her, for her whole life. And she's thinking, okay, maybe I could change things, but, you know, I'm just one person. I'm afraid.
And this is something that I really love because usually when we are reading um, this kind of books, you have this character that suddenly, you know, becomes powerful and becomes the hero and becomes and it's like, no, that's not real. And I love that Brigitte has these characters that are so human, as I say in the beginning, that, you know, if something like that happened, things will, will, will go probably like she wrote them. Because, you know, it's like you don't get to be all powerful and all knowing and all brave, like, yep, with a snap of a finger. And yeah, um, we have a Tessa, as I was saying, and we have another character who's called Corrick. Corrick is the prince. He is the king's justice. That means that he is the one that has to do everything his brother the king doesn't do. Like um, punish people, torture people, kill people to enforce that... Uh, um, the power that his brother has. The thing is that from the very beginning, Corrick tells you that they have suffered a very powerful loss. Um, they, their parents were well loved by the population, but they were killed. And so from a very young age, they have had to, you know, to survive this uh, with all the scars that they have inside of them, having seen their fathers brutally killed in front of them. And they think that in order to be able to be kings, they have to be like cruel and they have to be a love and they have to hold themselves like in a position of power. So what happened to their parents don't happen to them. So at the beginning you have these uh, characters who you think, I don't know, I hope that they have more liars because they are hateful and I hate them. But yeah, they have like a lot of liars and I have to say that, as I said at the beginning, I love how rigid cameras create, camera creates characters because you understand where they come from. Uh, they can have like different shades of grey if you want and you can understand them as people and you can sympathize with them or not but you can understand what has happened to them that makes them be the, like they are now and I think that's very powerful to have this ability as I say at the beginning to create a character that maybe you won't actually like or maybe you will but that you are able to say okay I understand why you are the way you are and you know, I think that's amazing. So we are going to have these two main characters and they are going to collide spectacularly. And I have to say that one of the other things that I love about Brigitte, Brigitte's way of writing is that uh, when she writes things like this, when you have like two opposites, and I'm not going to, it's going to be a spoiler free, okay? But when two opposites meet, uh, you know, the tension, the fear, the insecurity, the attraction, everything. She writes it so well. It's like you can cut it with a knife. It's amazing. I was I was completely enthralled by this book. I just couldn't put it down. I wanted to know how it was going to end. Now I need the second one, the third one. I don't know how many there are going to be. But this book is amazing. If you have love, a bow so dark and lovely, or, or letters to the lost, or whatever the budget it's has right on you're going to love this one. For me, I have to say that um, I think personally that this is one of her best yet. I do love that it has all this darkness and all these not mincing words and actions and consequences. And I love that it's somehow, in some way, it's dark, it's gritty, and it shows human nature and how people empower people that think that you know, entitled people that think that everyone shall vote them, uh, you know, it shows them very powerful in this book and how the will of the people to survive, uh, to gather together, to try to, you know, to overthrow the regime that's preserving them or that's killing them. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, no worse. It's amazing. And as I say, I love how everything that the characters do or don't do have consequences, uh, they're very real consequences. And I love that we have amazing parts in which everyone is happy and that we have parts in which everyone is not so happy. And as I say, I love the interactions between our main character, Tessa, and the king, for instance. Uh, and I love that she's not flippant and I love that she is not like, okay, fuck you, because she recognizes that as much as she might want to kill him or hurt him, he has a lot more of power than she has. And 
I love, as I say, some way and uh, some part in this review that she realizes that she's not a superhero, that she's a human being, and you know she has to save herself in order to help other people. And I love that, and I love how very real this book is. So yeah, pick this one up because you are going to love it if you like fantasy, uh, medieval times, castles. Gorgeous guys, dark guys, um, amazing mind characters called Tessa that you are like shining for her from the sidelines. Yeah, this book is amazing, you all. So, yeah, pick it up. Thank you for watching. Bye.